welcome back to Adventures in Randomia, my solo D&D adventure series. This is episode 12, in which our party interrogates the lizard folk sorcerer, and Connor discovers something that's a bit too close to home. Thank you to everyone who voted and made suggestions for what happens in this episode. I hope you enjoy it, and please do let me know in the comments. And if you do, remember to subscribe so you can catch the whole series. Last time, our party infiltrated the Ice Hollow Town guardhouse in an attempt to expose a corrupt guard who was killing thieves in the jail cells. The villain turned out to be a lizard folk sorcerer disguising himself as a guard. He was using storm magic to torture thieves to reveal the whereabouts of their thieving spoils. He would then kill them, making it look like a natural heart attack. After a battle in the narrow corridors of the guardhouse, Connor managed to prevent the lizard folk from escaping down the sluice by casting sleep. We rejoin our adventurers with the lizard folk sorcerer and the young night guard starting to wake as the effect of the sleep spell wears off. Connor and Freya are waiting in the jail cell for the lizard folk sorcerer to wake up. It is tightly bound to prevent it attacking or casting any spells. Clarissa is out in the corridor keeping an eye on the young night guard who was also affected by the sleep spell. The lizard folk comes to and swears angrily in a language unknown to Freya or Connor. Who are you people? Why are you getting in our way? I'm going to be asking the questions, not you, says Connor. You'll get nothing from us. We do not fear you. Connor rolls a 19 for intimidation, with Freya helping. You are going to tell me why have you been targeting thieves and where have you hidden all the loot? We do not know the fate of these thieves. Maybe they die of natural causes. That is what your doctors say. Yeah, a heart attack brought on by your shocking tactics, says Freya, like you tried to do to me. Tell me, says Connor, or you die here in this cell. Human threats are like the wind. Death is freedom compared to this. Connor's intimidation has failed. Connor sighs. You leave me no choice. He casts suggestion. I suggest you answer all our questions truthfully, lizard. The lizard folk rolls an eight on the wisdom save. Ah, you dare use your magic on us, wizard. Sorcerer, says Connor. You, a sorcerer? But you are human. Yeah, well spotted. Now answer the questions. Where is all the loot? So we need to consult the Oracle to find out where the lizard folk has hidden the loot. First of all, we ask, is it in the town? We borrow seven, so no, it's not. Freya says, it's not down the sewer, is it? So we ask the question, is it down the sewer? We were a 12, so this is yes, but. So this suggests that maybe the loot can be accessed via the sewer, but it's not actually hidden in the sewer. So where does the sewer lead? We're in a coastal town, the sewer leads to the beach. So we ask the question, is the loot on the beach? We were a 14, so yes, it is. So let's return to our interrogation. Go down the sewer drain, follow it out to the beach. Find this small cave, a short way to the north. We kept what was stolen there. Oh, great, says Freya. I thought we'd managed to avoid the sewer. Clarissa then talks to the young night guard. Are you okay? She asks. Yes, I think so. But what is that thing? And what is it doing in the guardhouse? That thing is your fellow night guard, says Clarissa. No way. How can that be? Yes, he transformed while we were fighting him. God, Dexter, what do you know about the thieves dying in their cells? Asked Clarissa. Oh yeah, it's been really weird. We find them dead in the cell in the morning without a mark on them. They all die of natural causes, according to the doctor. No, says Clarissa, this creature shocks them to death with his magic. The young guard's eyes open wide. You mean Dexter? No way! But there's a hint of knowing in his eyes as he speaks. Why didn't you come when Freya shouted that she was being attacked? Clarissa asks. Isn't that your job to ensure the prisoners are okay? 
So let's consult the oracle to find out just how much did this young night guard know. So first of all we ask the question, did the young guard know that Dexter was killing the prisoners? We roll a nine. This is no but. Then we ask, did he collude with the taking of the loot? We roll an eight. Again a no but. So this suggests he didn't definitely know there was something going on, but he did have suspicions. So we ask the question, was he suspicious? We roll a 13, so yes he was. So the question now is, well why didn't he raise his suspicions with the other guards? Why did he choose to keep quiet? Maybe he was being intimidated by Dexter. So we ask the question, did Dexter intimidate the young guard not to say anything? We roll a 20, so this is yes and. Dexter would say things like, we night guards need to stick together, and if we don't, terrible things could happen. He said what happens in the night stays in the night. So he was threatening me to keep quiet about the whole thing. I didn't think that many killed him though, just that we weren't doing our job properly. And the doctors always said it was natural causes, so what could I say? Thank you for being honest, says Clarissa. Don't worry, we will make sure this Dexter, this lizard folk, is brought to justice. Connor has been quiet and deep in thought all the while that Clarissa talks to the young guard. He then resumes his questioning of the lizard folk sorcerer. Why were you murdering thieves? So let's roll on some keywords to find out what lay behind the lizard folk sorcerer's actions. We get the words faith, disease, witness and premonition. It is all your fault. You come to our home and spread your sickness, you foul humans. Our eyes witnessed the deaths of many. The great Sessinek spoke to us then, sent us a premonition of a temple, a temple for the faithful to restore our tribe. And he commanded us to kill humans, to take their riches and build his temple. But what are you doing up here in the north? You all kind of live in the south, don't they? So again we roll on keywords to answer this question. We get the words country, proposal, pleasant and operation. Yes, our home is south of your Korokor. We travelled first to that human city and killed the thieves in their jails. No one asks questions about thieves. But one man guard was clever and he trapped us. But he agreed with slaying the thieves. He called them scum. But that place was too dangerous. The man guard helped us stay hidden. Helped us find more scum. And then he made proposal. We came here. He said it would be easy in this place. Operation Pleasant Country, he called it. <laughs> the guards up here are so stupid. It was all so easy. Wait. Korokur, you say? Yes. You were doing this before in Korokur? Yes. Our home is near your Korokur. So it was you? It was all your fault. You're the reason my gangmates died. It wasn't my fault. I've been torturing myself all these months, and it was you. Connor takes a step back from the lizard folk and raises his hands. He attempts to cast Firebolt, but the attack is too weak. A weak flame hits the lizard folk and merely chars the restraining rope. Damn you, he says, and he casts Firebolt a further two times. Each time the attack is too low, the fire just spits and sputters around his hands. The lizard folk sorcerer stares at him coldly. You are powerless, human sorcerer. Sezinek protects us. Carissa and Freya are shocked. Connor, stop what you are doing. The lizard is captured and tied up. He can't hurt people anymore. But Connor ignores Clarissa and attempts to cast Firebolt again. But still the attack is too weak to damage the lizard folk. Clarissa pulls out a small iron rod from her pocket. She holds it up and casts Hold Person on Connor. But Connor succeeds on the wisdom save and shrugs off the spell. Get off me Clarissa. This is nothing to do with you. This is personal between me and him. Connor will not be stopped. He's in a fury now. He casts Firebolt again, and this time it hits. A bright burst of fire erupts from his hands and engulfs the lizard folk, searing its flesh. It now has only one hit point left. Freya, stop him, says Clarissa. But Freya, on this rare occasion, hesitates, not sure what action to take. 
Suddenly, there is a surge of wild magic. A sudden burst of energy crackles around Connor. A strange rift opens in the space beside him, and from it emerges a monodrone. A small mechanical construct with a metallic spherical body, spindly legs and small wings. It hovers in the air next to Connor, focusing its single large eye on him, and issues a message as if from some authority. You are violating the rule of law and disrupting the order of the universe. You must cease and desist right now or bear the consequences. What the heck is that? shouts Freya. Bloody wild magic effect, says Connor grimly. The monodrome stabs at Connor with its tiny dagger, but it gets caught in the fabric of Connor's robe and does no damage. Connor gets out his own dagger and strikes the robotic entity right in the centre of its single eye. There is a flash of blue sparks as the dagger pierces the construct. The small mechanical creature disintegrates into dust, but leaves behind the tiny dagger which drops to the ground with a tinkling sound. Connor then turns back to the lizard folk and plunges his dagger into its chest. The lizard folk lets out an awful cry as it is instantly killed. <coughs> Connor, have you gone mad? says Freya. Yes, I have actually, he replies. This thing killed my gangmates in jail. And all these months I've been tormenting myself, taking the blame. And it was him. But why did you think you were to blame? asked Freya. Because I ratted on them, my own gangmates, to save my own skin. All right? Now you know. I got away, but many of my gang were thrown in jail. And a leader and some others all died in jail, in suspicious circumstances. I've been feeling guilty all these months, when it was him all along. Clarissa opens her mouth to point out that Connor was still partly to blame, having gotten thrown into jail in the first place. But she thinks better of it and closes her mouth again. She is visibly shaken and in shock from Connor's action. But you didn't need to kill him, Connor, says Clarissa. We defeated him. The authorities would have seen justice done. No, Clarissa. He's a sneaky one. You heard what he said. The guards here are stupid and his young guard has been controlled by him. As soon as we leave, he would have found out a way to fool him again. You want to stay here and babysit him while the justice system grinds its slow wheels? Well, says Clarissa, it's done. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Now let's get out of here and get that loot. But what about me? Says the young night guard. You don't have him bullying you anymore. You can learn to be a good guard. And you can take credit for ridding this place of this monster. Look, you hit it with your crossbow. You'll be a hero. The guard looks doubtful. What about the dagger to the chest? Here, take the dagger. It's yours. And the foyer? He's pretty burned up now. You'll think of something. Maybe you threw a wall torch at him. So be a good guard for me, okay? Says Connor. The young guard is struck dumb, but nods feebly. Come on, Freya. Help me get this sluice open says Connor as he walks out of the cell. Wait a minute, says Freya. I need to get my breastplate. Freya runs along the corridor to the storeroom to fetch her breastplate. A heavy silence hangs in the air between Connor and Clarissa while they wait for Freya to return. Freya comes back having donned her breastplate and heads into the sluice room. Connor follows. Clarissa turns to the guard. I'm sorry about all this, she says. Don't be, he replies. Good riddance. Clarissa sighs grimly and follows Connor and Freya to the sluice room. Freya is trying to remove the metal grate. She rolls a 16 for strength. She takes firm hold of the bars and tugs with all her strength. The grate resists for a moment and then comes loose. Freya falls backwards and sits down with a thud on the stone floor, the grate in her hands. Connor casts dancing lights down the dark, narrow passage revealed below. Freya peers down the hole. It looks to be only six feet, she says. I think we can jump it. Freya rolls a 14 for athletics. She makes the jump and lands squarely. Connor rolls a nine for acrobatics. He lands awkwardly and twists his ankle and takes two points of damage. As a tabaxi, Clarissa is able to use her climbing ability and she easily scales down the wall. The stench of a sewer hits them. They look around and in the light of the gently glowing orbs, they see that they are in a circular brick-built tunnel about six foot in diameter. 
Both Connor and Teresa have to duck to avoid hitting their heads on the brick ceiling. A noxious stream of filthy water flows through the tunnel. Oh, which way? says Connor. Well, it's a bit late to ask the lizard folk that, says Clarissa coldly. Freya looks up and down the tunnel. She rolls a 14 for survival. It'll be this way, she says. The direction of the water flow. That'll take us to the beach. Oh yeah, says Connor. Makes sense. Clarissa remains silent, a stony expression on her face. They wade through the shallow water in the tunnel, the dancing lights bobbing along beside them to light the way. After about five minutes of walking, they see that the passage ahead appears to be blocked by tree roots, whilst the stream of water flows into a smaller side tunnel on the left. This way, says Freya. This new passage continues for another ten minutes until they come to a junction. This time the water flows into both tunnels and it's not clear which way to go. Freya rolls a nine for survival. She peers at two water streams but cannot discern which way to go. Oh, I don't know, she says. Teresa sniffs the air. She rolls a 24 for perception. I can smell the sea, she says. It's this way. They head down the side tunnel on the right and after a few minutes this opens out into a wide passage through which they can see the light of a full moon glistening on the water. They turn left and can see the tunnel exit up ahead, opening out onto the beach. They emerge, thankfully, from the dank, stinking tunnel. It is a beautiful night. The full moon hangs low over the horizon, slowly setting in the last hour before dawn. Its light catches on the top of the surf, which rolls rhythmically onto the beach. They make their way along the shingle and sand towards some cliffs up ahead. The loot must be up here somewhere, says Freya with excitement. Her eyes scan the cliffs. She rolls a 12 for perception. Oh, here it is, she cries as they come upon a narrow cave entrance in the rock. They head inside. They can make out a dim shape at the back of the room. Freya jumps. Oh, watch out, there's another lizard. Connor casts dancing lights again. As the light increases, they see a battered wooden chest with the head of a lizard carved into it. This is it, says Connor as he approaches the chest. Freya and Clarissa follow. Hmm, pretty crude design, he says. Wait, says Clarissa. Her excellent eyesight has spotted something on the chest. She peers closer. I think there's a trap here. Look at the nostrils of the lizard. It looks to be designed for something to come out of those holes. Maybe darts. Connor looks more closely. Oh yes. Well spotted, Clarissa. I think you're right. I reckon the mechanism must be under the snout. Freya, could you lift the chest so I can look under to investigate? Easy does it, he says, as Freya slowly lifts the chest. Connor peers under. He rolls a five for investigation. There's a small wire here that I need to detach, and then we can open the lid safely. He rolls a seven for disarm. He pulls on the wire. There's a loud click, and two jets of bright green acid spray from the nostrils of the carved lizard onto the party. So we roll to check if they are hit by the acid. Connor rolls a two. He is hit full in the chest by the corrosive liquid. Freya rolls an eleven. She is splattered on her arms and legs. Clarissa rolls a 14. She is standing far enough back to be able to dodge out of the way. They both cry out in pain as the acid soaks through their clothing and burns into their skin. Connor sustains 19 points of damage and Freya 20. Then Connor wheels round suddenly to look behind him and says, Who's there? What is it? says Freya. I thought I heard a hissing noise behind us. The other two turn and look but can see nothing there. Hmm, says Connor. Must be just my imagination. Oh, I could do with a rest, says Freya. I'm not feeling too good. And you look awful, Connor. But there's no time, says Clarissa. We must get back before it starts to get light. She casts Cure Wounds on each of them. Freya regains 12 hit points and Connor 14. Connor returns to the chest and tries to pull open the lid. Damn, it's still locked, he says. Let me have a look, says Clarissa. She scrutinises the carved lizard and the mechanism beneath. She rolls a 17 for investigation. Aha, she says. I see how it works now. She firmly depresses the two yellow malevolent eyes. Look, these are buttons, she says. And then she pulls the wire to unlatch the lid. Again, there's a loud click. And this time, the lid releases. She lifts the lid of the chest and they all peer inside. Look at all this loot, says Freya. Let's get it back to the inn. No, says Clarissa. We're taking it back to the guardhouse. If you want to play vigilante, Connor, then you will do it for the right reasons. 
Having dispatched that creature, we will return the stolen goods to the rightful owners, the townsfolk of Ice Hollow. What? says Freya. What would you even do with all this stuff? It's just fancy domestic items, ornaments, cheap jewellery, things with sentimental value. Connor and Freya look at the items in the chest. They realise she is right. There is nothing of any real value to an adventurer here. How would you even carry all this stuff? I need one of those bags of whatchamacallit, says Freya, that you could put loads of stuff in. Oh, you mean bag of holding, says Connor. Yes, that's the one. They're pretty rare, Freya. You're unlikely to get hold of one. Then he says, what about a coin? That's not going to have sentimental value, and you can't even tell who owned it. Well, says Freya, she's about to say that coin definitely does have sentimental value to a dwarf, as well as recognisable personal marks. But she realises that this does not help her argument, so she keeps quiet. So they close the lid again, pick up the chest, and start carrying it back towards town. Connor and Freya carry it between them, while Clarissa keeps watch. They return to the sewer entrance. Do we have to go this way? says Freya. We could go via the beach path. Yes, I can see the inn up ahead, says Clarissa. It's not far. They return to the inn via the beach path. Phew, I really need a bath, says Clarissa. I stink. And so do you two. Are you changing your mind, Clarissa? asks Connor. No, she says. Come on, let's get this back to the guardhouse. They hear the town clock chime four. Although it is starting to get light, the streets are still deserted. Soon they arrive outside the guardhouse and bang on the door. The guard peers nervously out of the window and then comes to unlock the main door. Oh, you brought back all the stolen goods, he says in surprise. Of course, says Connor. We're not thieves, you know. Freya and Clarissa glance at each other, knowing their pockets are filled with coin. They head back to the inn and creep inside. See you in the morning, says Connor. It already is morning, says Freya. You know what I mean. And the three of them return to their rooms to catch an hour or so of sleep, as well as take a much needed bath. And here we will leave our party for now, as they recover from the adventures of the night. Join us again next time as Freya, Clarissa and Connor set sail on the Frosty Maiden, heading for the city of Everpool in their quest to find the Wizard's Tower.